Hello, everyone. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University. Welcome back. This is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And today is December 2nd, 2021. And we're going to do a, um, a two point perspective drawing of um, our cubes that we've been working on. And in the morning, I, um, I recorded a video that shows how to do it using a uh, a printed template that you can work on and that using full uh, tools, um, triangles, etc. In the afternoon today, we're going to do one where we just use a straight edge and uh, just a pencil. So these will be more like, um, you know, kind of freehand, kind of a hybrid, um, and it will be a little faster, okay? Uh, for that purpose, I built this cube, um, which is made out of um, acetate, thick acetate because I wanted to show all the lines that happen inside the cube, a little bit like a, an x-ray view, okay? So we'll get back to that. And before I start with this version, which again is the so-called freehand version, I'm gonna go over uh, what we did in the morning, okay? So to kind of um, bring everybody up to speed and the uh, the one we're gonna do today, I mean, this afternoon is this, we're gonna, we're gonna just do it freehand, okay? And we'll, we'll start from scratch. I'll have this file online so you can download it and you can work directly on this if you want, or you can just recreate it. Um, so in the morning, uh, what we did was we, uh, uh, there is a couple of options that you can uh, do this assignment. Uh, uh, well, there's actually, yeah, three options. Uh, one of them is this afternoon and, and two was um, in the morning. And so in the morning, what we did, and you, you should check that video, okay? That's, um, there's two videos, part one and part two, doing this construction, okay? So for this version, this is not there. You'll have two sheets, which um, look like this. Hold on a second here, yeah. So these two sheets will be separate, one and two, and it will be like a printout. And you can download it and print it, and then you'll need to tape it, okay? You need to tape it and you need to cut it so that the the view of the cube, okay, which is, by the way, it's three inches, not four for the perspective. Um, and, uh, and once you tape it, you know, then tape it down and just build it all here, okay? Again, this won't be there. So that's one version. In this version, the um, station point is there, it's located directly um, in front of the cube. Okay, what we call the leading edge of the cube. Okay, right there, this guy right here. Um, and it turns out that's perfect if we're just gonna do one. Now you could do both if you want it um, for this assignment, uh, in which case it would look something like this. Okay, but you don't have to do the second one. The only one required is the, the one on the right. And uh, if you decide to do both, you could use another drawing uh, instructions that shows how to move this point a little bit over to the left so that the, uh, so that the cube on the left is not too distorted, okay? And this is that one. Um, you could in theory draw on this, but this is really too small. So if you use this version, uh, just, just look it up on the computer or, or download it. And then just use this measurement to set up the drawing. So essentially, um, you need to draw at that point. Yeah, you would need to draw, uh, tape two sheets, blank sheets, and then redraw the setup. And then um, again, just draw one one cube or or both. Um, in this view, though, again, the, the the station point is a little bit off. Not off, but it's a little bit moved to the to the left, let me explain why, uh, in such a way, yeah, it's here, in such a way that when I look at the cube, it's it's kind of balanced. And the other one is more like this. So the view is gonna be a little bit skewed to the left, uh, but it works if you just do one, okay? Um, then 
just to recap what we did last week in terms of perspective, uh, and if you haven't watched that video, you should. Um, we talked about how what we do on the plane, what we do on the paper, is really a combination of different planes, a vertical plane, your window, and the horizontal plane, which is the ground. And to, to explain that, if you recall, I made this uh, model that shows how that geometry happens in three-dimensional space, right? And then I matched it to the drawing that's drawn on the acetate. Now it's a little bit hard to, to do it here, but um, so that you can see it's a projection of the physical object behind that plane, which again is this, this is the picture plane, right? That's your window. So refer to that as well. Uh, again, that was for the two point perspective tutorial of this object. And a couple of things to remember there was that we placed the cube at a certain angle. It was at the angle of your triangles of actually the only one, the, the one, the 30 and the 60. And then using that angle, we projected these lines um, to the picture plane and we found so-called diagonal points. We brought those down onto the horizon line, which we decided was a particular height, which was slightly above the top. So we could see a little bit of the top. Um, and there we found the vanishing points with that system. Um, I made a big circle because I don't want to lose that. I want to make sure I go there. We drew the first edge by simply projecting the elevation. And then uh, because it's facing exactly that spot, that's the actual dimension. And then we went from there, from these two spots to the vanishing point, one and two. But now we need to know what this is. And to do that, we project down the two points, the two sides to the station point right here. And where that intersects, sorry, the picture plane, we drew down two lines. And that gives us the sides. And once we do that, in this case, we have a cube and we'll be drawing a cube. Um, everything else can be done without really ever going back here because we can draw diagonals. And when we draw diagonals, we essentially, um, we have all the information that we need to find the grid, okay? Um, so the two thing, the two points you'll have to constantly go back to are here, besides of course, doing all the vertical lines. So that was the general uh, setup. And, And let me show you then what we did. So once, once we did that part, we had to do the grid, okay? And we, it's easy to do the front. This, by the way, is our storyboard, right? We always wanna keep referring to the storyboard. Um, in my case, in this case, I'm looking at it here, which is the looking at the cube in its symmetrical view, okay? because I've decided that that's a nicer view to show the perspective. Um, the final in the morning and also in the afternoon, although it will be slightly different, is a drawing that has in the today, just in the afternoon, just this part. Um, in the morning, the other version, also the plan, okay? That's the final, but to get to this, uh, we started out by constructing it, constructing the grid with all the lines, and we're gonna redo it now just freehand, um, then the two fronts are easier because you can see them. In the back, you have to kind of look through, right? But you can't look through because unlike my model here, which is made out of plexiglass, uh, cell of, um, acetate, yours will be solid, right? So, so we have a system to, um, to get around that. And that will be to use tracing paper and unfold it from the back to the front so that we see everything from the front, or rather from, from the outside, as opposed to having to look through inside. Uh, so from that, let me just show you the steps that we did. After we constructed the front, we took tracing paper, okay? and we built 
Um, and we built the front. We also found the center of the cube by crossing uh, the two opposite points by connecting the two opposite corners of a cube with diagonals to find the center. Uh, then what we did to find the back, and I could have drawn here, but it would have been a little tricky. Uh, so instead we took, um, actually no, we put another piece of trace and we did the back. You can see it's easier now to see the back here. Once I did the back, I connected all the lines. Um, sorry, we did the, the grid, okay? We did the grid, not the actual design, but to find the design, here's what we did. And I'll repeat this so it will be, if you take a piece of trace and you put it on top and you just focus on the back like this, imagine that you're looking through, right? Um, so imagine that in my cube, you're looking through the cube and you're seeing what's behind, inside the cube, okay? Uh, because it's tricky. Our storyboard is all outside, but this view is looking inside, right? To find the lines in the back. So, but we because now we can almost see with this view like this, we can then draw it. Um, sorry, we draw the grid just with the squares and then we unfold it this way so that I can match it to my design. Okay, so you can see now this part from the back is sort of being flipped over so that it's like the wraparound view, which is equal to this view. And that's, once I do that, then I can draw my design on this based on the grid and based on, on my design right there, right? So then we use tracing paper again and again and again, because you know, just to visualize it, we did that. Then we took another piece of trace and we did this. And at that point, we looked at the, uh, at the cube itself again, not in X-ray view, but in solid view to see how we can match it. Um, once we do that, that's the solution. Then you need to draw it. Um, with a straight edge, right? Even if you're doing it now freehand. Um, so what I did is I did it first here um, and then yet another, another layer. And then I simply copied what I knew was gonna be the correct view and just using only the lines that I needed, okay? So we're gonna do it now freehand and we're gonna achieve the same, the same goal, okay? So I'm gonna move this, this is very important. You have that ND of your own design. I'm gonna put some white paper here on top. And then this will be the one that will be online for you to download. Um, to download or reconstruct. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. I'm actually gonna eyeball it and reconstruct it. This will be on eight and a half by 11, so you can easily print it. Um, and then we're gonna be drawing the grid there as well, okay? So, um, oh, one thing, because we're constraining everything into a smaller space. What that means technically is that actually we're moving closer to the object because the vanishing points are gonna be literally actually closer to the object in, in, the, in the drawing. And that means that these lines are gonna be more steep. And I was trying to show it this morning. Let's see if I can show it again. Um, As I move close to it, those lines become steep. So let's see. So it doesn't matter really, okay? Because it's fine. It's just that oh, it's different, okay? So if you compare these two views, you can see, right? This is goes much higher, right? And this is going, it's going a little bit flatter. And literally that's what happens if, if you, um, if I'm gonna try not to match this view to this one, right? Let's say like that. Well, yeah, let's say I come. Uh, 
Okay, so I have a certain angle, right? You know, it's, it's rising so much above my horizontal, okay? But if I bring it closer, now I need two, two lines. If I bring it closer to the camera, you can see that that angle is gonna be steeper. It's hard not to match. Okay, anyway, there is a difference and it will be, um, that didn't show it very well, but the difference is that this will look a little more distorted, right? So the trick is to start out with something that looks pretty good, even though it's somewhat, you know, kind of in your face, okay? Uh, otherwise you have to use a bigger piece of paper uh, and you can do that too, right? But let me show you one important thing is that even though we're gonna do this freehand is that these lines really try to stay straight, try to stay or orthogonal, okay? At 90 degrees. And so here in this drawing in the handout that you'll download, it's already nicely done because I used the triangle, you know, in combination. But now I'm gonna actually try to redraw it freehand. Um, if, you, if you're close, it will be good. You know, it will be, um, it won't be too hard to do even without using a triangle. So I'll leave this underneath so that I can sort of copy it. Oh, yeah, that's the piece of paper I'm gonna use, okay. Um, that's it. So now I'll just start and I'll do, I'll try to go kind of fast because um, you can always stop the video, okay. So start out. So yeah, you do need a, a ruler. 12 inch ruler will be great in general because um, just to go to the vanishing points, right? So start out with uh, with the horizon line. Okay. And then, um, yeah, your vanishing points will be obviously, you know, towards the end here. So you get the most, um, and then because the cube is again, a little bit, um, you see more of the left side, uh, we're gonna put just like in this one, we're gonna put the, uh, the leading edge um, somewhere here, okay? So, well, why don't I do this? Let, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just get the aid of a triangle just once, okay? Roughly like that. I'm gonna pick that as a good line. And then I'm gonna do the rest all freehand and see how we see how how we do, okay? Because it's faster that way, right? So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna uh, let's see, I'm gonna try to draw first the square on the right. And right now I think I can zoom in so it's a little more. course when I do that the camera now is in my face <laughs> but never mind so yeah let's start with the left one roughly okay let's see um, yeah see now I'm just now I'm just eyeballing it okay I'm just trying to make it parallel see if you can because it's it's important uh, but it is faster, of course, if you don't use a triangle. So we're going for speed now. So that looks pretty good, even though, again, it looks different from this view because all of a sudden you have to imagine I'm tiny and I'm really close to this object, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm literally kind of making it up, although I remember what the other one looked like. So. You know, there is a little bit of, uh, before I did this side, actually, I tried to figure out what the, um, what the top would look like. And, you know, to see if it looks also like a square. In other words, a square in perspective, right? And I did this and I said, okay, well, let's see, does that look like a pretty good, that looks like a square. So, don't worry too much about, it will be by default, a kind of distorted tube. 
but within that distortion, everything will distort in the same sort of coordinated way. So you can still draw the cube in a, in a logical, correct way. Um, yeah, just so here again, just use, try to eyeball it and make it. Okay, so that's it. That's the beginning. Um, once again, if you print it, you don't have to draw this part, but you can draw immediately on this, okay? And, um, and actually, um, that will be uh, the other part, the back part here will also be drawn, right? Uh, actually, I don't want to tape it because otherwise, I get, anyway, so now I'm going to draw the back. And if I do this right, the top point should correspond to the bottom in the back there, okay? Let's see how good it is. Should be pretty good. And yeah, it's quite good. Okay, so that's my cube. Even though I'm not, I'm not gonna use the whole thing, I will now um, uh, darken what I call, you know, the wireframe of the cube, right? So just to, you know, just to emphasize it a little bit, okay. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll just bring it closer to me so I don't have to move around that. Um, and now, as, as you can see, we only have the vanishing points and the horizon line, right? We don't really have much else, but that's all right. So that's the horizon line, um, left vanishing point. So in order to do this more constructed, um, just see the other videos, <laughs> left, right vanishing point. Um, okay, so. What I'll do now is I'll follow my design. Remember, I'm looking at the cube this way. So maybe I'll keep this handy right here. It's very important, right? We talked about this, having your storyboard always there. Um, and then we're gonna refer to the cube too, okay? We're gonna look at the cube. So um, yeah, so once again, we're gonna do the symmetrical version. We're going to do this version, um, which shows the cube kind of evenly left to right, okay, as opposed to the other one. Um, so what I want to do first is draw the left side and the right side, because those are the ones that are immediately uh, easy to do. Again, I'm looking at here in the, um, I'm looking at this point, okay. So um, let me show you now how you can do everything um, using diagonals. And actually, it looks like I do need to tape it, otherwise it moves too much. Oops, not use scotch tape, that's not good. Use masking tape. Uh, maybe I'll tape it just on the left. All right, so now I'll go a little fast, but basically, if you recall, if you have a thing in perspective like that, if I want to divide it up nicely and evenly, I can do diagonals. That will find me the perspective center. Then this goes to the vanishing line and I find this division, right? Then I can continue doing that. If I do more diagonals, diagonals, I get other spots and I get these points there. And, and so forth and so on. The other thing I can do is I can actually, um, oops, I can actually draw my divisions on the side of the cube and pull out all these lines and then do one diagonal and that will give me all the other divisions, okay? So either way, let's just do it first by the diagonal, the big one, because it's easier. All right, you don't have to draw them as dark. Uh, it will get a little bit confusing. In fact, all you need is really just the center, right? So 
there you go. So now I found that center of the face in perspective and I'm gonna do the vertical. Just, just try to be <laughs> parallel, even though, you know, but don't do this, don't do that. Just try to stay straight, okay? And that point now I connect to the vanishing point, which automatically, if I did it right, should actually split this line exactly in half. Let me see if I did it right. Or roughly in half, okay? So it's seven, yeah, perfect. Three and a half and three and a half. So that's, that's the thing. I wanna do now the other two divisions. So I do yet another diagonal and another diagonal here. And by the way, all these diagonals, it's pretty cool. They will actually meet somewhere outside here. And all the diagonals on the other way, they would meet somewhere down here because those diagonals are also parallel, right? Um, so I found now these other spots and I'm just going to uh, connect it and I get my first grid right there, okay? And, okay, so now I start, you know, getting my little spots here. So I start marking them up and doing the rest. And actually now what I'll do is I'll mark little dots so that, so that I create a kind of a, a surface, like a membrane, a, a screen, by just darkening the spots on that side of the, of the cube, okay? You will see they immediately um, make you, you know, let you read the, uh, the surface of the cube um, nicely. So now I wanna do the right side. And notice that because, because I already have these divisions now here, I can just simply go to the right and then with a simple diagonal. So in other words, I can do this. I've got these divisions. I go like that. And then when I do a diagonal, I get all my spots, like the floor in the garden perspective. Once I find those, I can just bring them down. So let's do that. And you know, things will get a little busy, but it's okay. So one, two, three. You can do either diagonal. I like this diagonal because it makes kind of more precise crossings. Let's see. Right there. So I found those three, now I, I just bring up these lines like that. One, two, and three. That's the right side, okay? So I'm gonna draw my dots just because again, I wanna see them. Okay. Um, the purple is not a great color to show, but. And now just because I like to see like I've done something enough, you know, I've done, I've achieved something. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the first, lay, the first design on the two sides, okay? And that's pretty straightforward. I just follow it, right? That's my design here. I just follow it. So um, I could draw it right on it really. Um, so why don't I do that? Because it's there. Um, yeah. Because I think that's how we did earlier. So so I start here. So it's one across. Anyway, I can really just follow it by, by looking at the sketch. Right? So in theory, you could draw every single line on this single piece of paper, but in practice, you'll see that it's a little easier if you use tracing paper for the, especially for the back, okay? Yeah. Okay, so the way I did that, I just simply followed. I said, okay, one across, one across and up, two down, two across and one up, and I get that design. And now 
it looks really similar to the, uh, it's too late now. So I wish it looked a little bit lighter. Maybe I can to differentiate from the rest of the drawing. Not much better. All right. Well, we'll stick to dark color. We'll just make it. We'll just make it um, thicker. Okay. Anyway, I'm doing this because I know it's going to be right because it's in the front. I have no. So now I continue and I do um, do the other one. So I go two across and one down. I kind of know this thing by heart by now. You probably do two with your cube. Uh, two up. One down and across and one across and one across. So that's the beginning. Um, one thing we want to draw also is the center of the cube. Okay. Again, you take the opposite corners, right? The back here and the front here, the side here and the back here on the top, and you cross it. And, the, and that will immediately appear like a little odd, a little like off. But don't despair because it's just the way it is. Um, okay. And quickly, if you want to see why that is probably okay. Now, this is a different one. Um, you can see that if I draw the cube, uh, I'll show you where that falls the center of the cube, that is. It falls here, right? Which is a good sign because it falls in that rectangle that's formed by, you know, the overlapping of the front and the back line. So that's good. It kind of reassures me that it's, you know, that it's in the ballpark, um, although it has to be, you know, exact, but... So mind you, it's freehand, but it's going to be really exact, right? Still. Um, okay, now the difficult part is to do the back because again, number one, it's going to be all overlapping. Number two, we're going to be looking at it this way, but really uh, we can't see it this way, right? We can only see it this way and that's what our design shows. Our design shows this. So the system I came up with is using tracing paper and then flipping the paper. So the next step I'm gonna do is do the grid for the two back faces, do them on top with tracing paper and then flip it over, okay? Um, so let's just take another piece of tracing paper, which is probably, again, the second most important thing after, well, the third, after regular paper and after your pencil. Um, now, because I'm doing this trick of flipping the bag over, I'm actually gonna create a hinge here on this paper. I'm gonna draw a line on that hinge. Uh, now I'm gonna try to use a nicer color. Okay. And and now I'm gonna do this freehand, okay? So, uh, because Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do freehand before I do the two sides in the back, I'm gonna do this part freehand because I just want to get it on this, um, on this piece of tracing paper, okay? Just bear with me for a moment, this will, this will make sense once I do the back side. Um, Okay, well, the back side, what I'll do is I'll actually bend this. Okay, so this will be the back, this is the front back. So the first thing I'll do is now draw the grid. And actually I'm gonna do this now precisely because, well, precisely again, freehand, right? One can be precise even freehand, um, but but make sure yeah you align this right. Make sure you align that, uh, and in a moment it will make sense what I'm talking about in terms of flipping this 
this business. Now, because it's tracing paper, it's nice. We can really see what we're doing and we can always raise it. So I'll take my pencil again. And because I have the information already on the right edge and the left edge, I'm gonna mark that. Uh, which is gonna give me really quick with the diagonal system, the information that I need, okay? Um, Why well, don't I actually go ahead and draw the, the boxes too, I mean, the faces, the squares. Um, so this idea of like separating parts because it's too hard to see all at once, I wanna just deal with the back. I wanna just deal with the front. How do I do that? It's really hard to do it. We, we don't have layers like in Photoshop <laughs> uh, in our eyes, but we can make those layers with tracing paper, which is a lot, a lot cheaper and a lot faster, actually. Okay, so here we go. Now I got those two faces. This is, remember, this is gonna be the back um, and I'm going, I'm looking through. Okay. So now I'll connect. In fact, I could even do this. I can put a piece of paper so that I can see it clearly. I connect those now to the, uh, to the vanishing point, right? Always have them around. Okay. And this is a point where you say, okay, why don't I just use a computer? And the question that the trick is that you might not always have a computer, number one. Number two, you know, you might make a mistake in a computer and you don't know what's going on because the computer doesn't show all these steps. Okay, so diagonal, very straightforward. I do a diagonal that gives me all the points. Diagonal here. Um, okay, well, might as well keep it while I'm doing that, uh, the background that is. And so now I do this part. So I was gonna say, you see how easy it is? I know it's not that easy, but it's logical, right? So you can, you can achieve a lot just by, um, in this case, doing everything freehand. That's a grid for the back. Now you can see it's a lot complicated to see it like this. And that's why it's good to separate. Um, so I'm going to simply, well, why don't I just make those dots? You see some lines start to overlap, which makes it a little tr tricky, but and this line is a little crooked. Okay, now, Bear with me for a moment. Here's the thing. Now what I could do, I could say, well, I don't need to flip this. I can just draw it using my, my method, so what I call of um, battleship. In other words, I've gotten to this point, if you recall in the front, now I have to connect back. So I could just say, okay, I won't go across one, down one, across one. So I could do that, but it is in reverse, right? I'm moving here this way, and in the drawing, I'm moving the other way. So it's much easier if we do this. We flip back the front, the front, right? Using our hinge here. And then we flip the back to the outside like that, okay? So let me repeat that. Um, everything is outside here. This view is outside, but that view is inside. So it's different looking than that. In order to make it look like that, I have to go around the box. And because I can't, instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the box unwrap itself to be in front of me and the side. And that's what I do, okay? I don't wanna do this too fast. Front. That's the back, but it, this is the hinge, and I'm gonna hinge that out so that, and when I do that, you see what happens is now I can easily um, 
replicate my design because I can simply copy it exactly the way it looks, okay? Um, this was like this, right? Okay, so this is exactly the same as this. This is in perspective with this funny fold out. Um, so why don't I just draw that now? Um, let's see. Yeah, let me let me use. Actually, I can still do it freehand just because I really want to. So again, I'm gonna match this this left side, right? So it's like that. And just follow it pretty straightforward. Um, and just think about it, even in the computer, even if you had Photoshop, well, if you have a 3D program, it would be maybe, maybe easier. I don't know. Um, SketchUp is a good program if you wanna start using a 3D program. Um, so now I know that's gonna be perfect because it met, matches perfectly, right? That sequence, this sequence matches perfectly this sequence. So I'm gonna fold it back. I'm going to return it to the original perspective view. Let's see. Now I'm going to tape it. And now I'll take yet another piece of trace. Well, first of all, I will, I will uh, draw some more lines here, okay? And because now everything is in place, um, I will actually use a straight edge, okay? And I'm gonna use a color actually, and maybe I'll use maybe I'll use orange for the line. So remember, I had the center. I had the center there, which was here, right? I'm gonna mark it again. And so now I'm gonna do what I call "Don't think, just do it. Don't worry about it." And that is, take your um, just trust that whatever you have already done, it's gonna be. It's going to be correct, right? So you can vaguely see the back here. So now let me let me make that first a little more um, visible, okay? And this is what I call now the you know the thread, or actually I call it the embroidery line. You know, imagine you have a little ant that works like a sewing machine, um, and it's going around and doing. Um, you know, I'm doing this, this thread, okay? So again, I'm not worrying to just do all these overlaps. I don't know what the final thing will, will look like, but I'm just drawing everything according to the, uh, to the design, right? I'll darken these lines because these are all that way, they're all blue. Um, in a sense, I'm still sketching now, right? I'm still not really doing the final. I'm just, um, I'm just building it up, okay? So that it's nice and clean. And I have all the information that I need. Um, also because it starts looking, you know, again, satisfactory. Um, right. So I have my thread. Um, it doesn't look like much, except if I put a piece of white paper underneath, it looks, it looks better. So now I'm gonna connect every dot, every, every dot around it to the center, okay? Uh, this helps a little bit. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit so I can show that that's where this comes in, right? So this cube I made to show that at some point, what you wanna do is really just draw everything, right? Every single line that you see here, again, in, in, in X-ray view, I want you to draw it without worrying about it, what will be right, what will be visible and what will be invisible, um, hidden lines. So to, 
correct, uh, so called. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw all those lines going to the center from every point. Now, because my design has a spot that doesn't require an extra line there in the corner, which is this spot right here, I don't know if you can see it. Um, I'm gonna skip that because I know I won't need it. In your case, you might draw it, but then later you don't have to use it. Uh, but now you will see that as you connect opposite points with a line, they should all go through the center of the cube, okay? So just be very, you know, decisive and just do it. Um, and when they start all matching up, then, then you start, you know, feeling good about it, right? Uh, but again, everything is, is in x-ray view. Like that. Um, every single line goes through the center and meets at the opposite, at the opposite point in the design. Like that. Again, I'm not going to do that one. I have one more here. Okay, so that includes, yes, all the lines that I need. Um, okay, and now I'm still sketching, I'm still sketching. What I wanna do now is get to the point where I see what's hidden and what's, and what's, and what's uh, um, visible, right? So that's where you now go to, you know, to, the, to your cube and say, well, okay, now let me, um, let me let me look at my cube and see if I can if I can match it right. And in fact, you can you can try to match the view of your cube, you know. And you have to look at it and say, okay, which is the right, you know, compared to the. So your the camera right now is the uh, is your eye, right? So I'm trying to see see how it matches. And because now your cube is solid, you can immediately see, oh, okay, what lines can I do that are hiding the other lines? Okay, to do that, um, tracing paper again, <laughs> one more time, and we're gonna sketch it out. So I'll leave this here for now because I can't hold it at the same time, but I'm going to take yet another piece of uh, piece of trace and now I'm going to do a little bit of trial and error. I know that the front is there for everybody to see right away. I mean, there is no question about this part, right? Let's, let's see, it's in focus. Yeah. So, Let's go ahead and do that part. And then we deal with the rest, right? Okay, sorry about that. So I'm probably then seeing, you know, the other, these lines again, they go to the center, so why not finish them off? And as soon as I do that, you see, I'm hiding a lot of other stuff, which I won't need. And that's nice because I know I won't have to worry about those anymore. Um, so the next thing I want to trace is probably the ones in the back and I'm like, oh, okay, that looks like it would be visible. And if that's so, then when these other lights come down, they're probably going to stop there and here so that it doesn't quite match that corner to make it more depth like. Um, that's it. And then just these two other pieces right there, this part goes down. So I don't see that. So that's it. Now, if I had made a mistake, I could have corrected, but now I lift this up and I say, okay, that looks pretty good. That's my solution. Now it's a sketch. So now I have to draw it and that's it. So now this last part would be basically just executing this solution, which I know is good because, well, because also I want to match it to my, to my real cube, right? Okay, so I can, I can try to see if 
if I can match it, it's kind of like that, roughly, right? Uh, yeah, like that. So that's it. Now I take this. This is my my uh, you know my model, and I go back to my um, my drawing, the one that I'm doing you know more precisely. And so I just want you to remember this trick of unfolding it because I think it's really good. I think it really, really helps. In fact, I like it. I'm gonna make it darker here. So for the video, it can be seen a little better. Um, this being the other hinge, right? Okay. So again, that's my solution. I will now just simply copy it because um, okay, but because um, now I'm going to draw it precisely. I actually need to redraw now everything here, which means that I actually need to keep this here. In fact. Yeah, I'm not gonna redraw it on there because I've already done it here and it's very precise. So I will just simply, yeah, in another version, I draw it on the white paper, but here it's on the tracing paper. So I will, um, I'll just tape this exactly in place. put my model neck nearby. That put a piece of white paper underneath. And it should be fairly straightforward to um, just copy it, right? Um, so when you do this final one, um, again, at school, we would have nicer paper, but nicer transparent paper, but no, vellum, but now we have only, um, we have only trace. So for this one, you might want to make the drawing horizontal because you don't have the plane view, right? So I'm just going to center it roughly. You don't see it, but I'm just centering it on the sheet. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, that then that will be it. Um, so that's the story. So this process of tracing paper going back and forth is gonna be true also for the, uh, um, for the next drawing, for the very last drawing, which will be just looking inside like the architecture um, but it will be two point perspective. Okay, remember that one was one. So, okay, nothing to it. Now I'm just going to, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna rip this out even though, <laughs> don't do it in years because I just have to feed it into the camera, okay? Into the view of the camera. So, but don't do this in your, <laughs> in your final. Um, that's it, I'm just now going, I'm just gonna copy it. And I know, uh, well, actually I better, Go a little slow just so that I don't completely mess it up. Uh, perhaps I can still put a piece of white paper under it so that it is um, it's easier to see. Let me see. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. So that's it. Just five more minutes and we should be done. Um, and if we forget a line, it's easy to just lift it up and see what's, what, what is missing, right? Oops, a little longer there. Okay. 
um, whenever I do these lines, I'm doing the um, starting from one spot, one corner, and then going to the other, and then starting from the other corner and going to the middle. So it's a little uh, cleaner, well, a lot cleaner than, than trying to stop on a dime at the other end because that's hard. So, okay, make sure I do all the parts in the front. Okay, good idea, yeah, to do just the parts in the front first. However, the lines going through the center, it's nice if you do them all in one shot because they're gonna be cleaner that way. And then, okay, so it's starting to look pretty good. See this perspective by using the edge that shows the symmetrical view is better because it gives a sense of, um, whenever you have a situation like that, you see what I did, I just I actually emphasized a little bit more that it's not touching that corner, otherwise it flattens the view. Um, anyway, yeah, it gives a better sense of the perspective because the same triangles that are in the front or in the back, except they're smaller, these ones right here, as opposed to these ones, they're just, you know, flip going up instead of down. Almost done. So now I'm gonna check it with the same piece of white paper to see if I missed anything, but I think I got it. Yeah, that's it. That's the final of our cube, which would be this view right here. Okay. About uh, there, roughly. So thank you for your patience and I'll see you in class. Take care, bye-bye.